We're going to talk about elision, which is section 42 in Hansen and Quinn's Greek and Intensive Course, and it appears in that book on page 98. So elision is a way that written Greek represents how Greek was really pronounced. Ancient Greeks had a horror of what's called hiatus. They didn't like to have a vowel sound and then a stop before another vowel sound. So in the phrase, in the sentence, pempeta angelus, pempeta ends with a vowel sound, and then you have to stop and start another vowel sound with angelus. So instead of pronouncing that uncomfortably, Greek gets rid of the vowel before, marks the missing vowel with an apostrophe, and simply says, pempet angelus. It's nice because um, what you see is what you get. Usually Greek is printed with the elisions marked and you don't have to guess where they are or remember what the rules are because Greek simply won't have them there. This is one of the advantages, I think, in um, printed Greek over printed Latin where you have to know where the elisions are. In Attic prose, which is the Greek that we're learning in Hansen and Quinn, this happens when the vowel before another vowel is a short vowel. And so you can elide, for instance, the alpha at the end of epemsa. So if you're saying, I sent messengers, epemsa angelus, Attic Greek doesn't like that hiatus between the two alphas. And so we can get rid of the alpha, put an apostrophe to mark that it was there, and say epems angelus. The same happens with hoida anthropoi. Instead of saying hoida anthropoi, Greek is likely to elide the epsilon in the de and simply say hoida anthropoi. Now we'll have a special situation with this particular hiatus, epidel sata homeron. Greek still doesn't like that hiatus between the epsilon and the omicron that starts homeron. So it's going to get rid of the epsilon. But homeron begins with a rough breathing. And tau now is coming right up next to that rough breathing. And rough breathings, it turns out, are contagious. They're kind of infectious. And they infect any letter that they can. Tau is one of the letters that has an aspirated version. And so if you get an elision that suddenly has a consonant that has an aspirated version bump up next to a rough breathing, it gets infected by that rough breathing and turns into its aspirated version. So in this case, the tau is going to turn into a theta. We're still going to mark the elision with an apostrophe. And instead of epidelsata homeron, we get epidelsat homeron. And that's elision. And added Greek, it really only happens when it's a short vowel that you're alighting. Long vowels are strong enough and diphthongs are strong enough to hold on and get pronounced anyway. When you start reading poetry, you'll find that there are other ways that Greek avoids hiatus and sometimes it doesn't follow the rule of it being a short vowel that gets alighted. But what you'll see in Hanson and Quinn and in Attic Prose is um, only short vowels elided at the ends of words before vowels at the beginnings of other words. And that's elision. Not too tricky. And the nice thing is that um, Greek prints it for you and Hanson and Quinn will show it to you. Sometimes you have to think hard about what vowel could be the one missing. And when you are writing Greek in your English to Greek exercises, don't do elision. Go ahead and put the correct vowel at the end of whatever word you're dealing with so that I can see that you're getting the ending right.